Good evening and welcome again to Turning Point, Subic Bay Community of Faith's weekly devotional. And today we are on our episode 3. And I am hoping and praying that everyone watching this is all well. And right now I would like to talk about something very personal, something very close to my heart. This is called the comfort zone. You know, everyone wants to remain in their comfort zones, right? Whether it's in work, in life status, or even just the simple day-to-day -day routines that we are doing. It's not a big secret that most people don't like change. Thus, logically, most people seek to remain doing things that they are familiar with. It gives us a sense of comfort, like wearing the same tattered pajamas, and holding off as long as possible to buying a new one because it has, it's full of holes now. And by nature, we are a creature of habit. But there are times when we get called out to our comfort zone to, get, to go out there. And God usually calls us to step out into the unknown, leaving the safety of our shells and be exposed to the realities and uncertainties of the unfamiliar. And whenever it happens, usually fear, doubt, and many, many, many other worries usually arise when we pull ourselves out of the safety of our shells. You know what? These feelings are, however, natural. And no one is immune to them. And once we are called out to venture into the unknown, we would always feel this. This reminded me of a story in Matthew 14, 28 to 31. They were, Peter was, at, was inside the boat, and he saw a figure, and he said, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Peter was the only disciple of Jesus, the one who had ever walked on water. But when he was called to do so by Jesus, like a normal human being, fear got a hold of him. The doubt settled in and he sank. I can totally identify with Peter in the sense that I was recently given an opportunity to take up my master's degree at the International Graduate School of Leadership. You know, it was exciting at first and I was stoked to do it. I was really, really happy to do it. But on that fateful day of June of 2018, as the days drew closer to the first day of class, I suddenly felt an odd sense of restlessness. No, the thoughts of leaving my, my job, my band, and everything else that I was used to scared me. I was at a very comfortable place in my life until God called me out into the water. Just like Peter, I hastily stepped out of the boat and walked on the water. And while walking towards him, fear suddenly gripped me and slowly began to pull me under. I started doubting myself. I started doubting the calling. I wondered if I was just doing it for myself or if maybe I was being pressured into it. I feared that maybe one day I would realize that the entire thing was a big mistake. I was looking everywhere and I should have not been looking. Instead, I should have been focusing my eyes directly on what's in front of me. And that was Jesus. While I was thinking, Jesus reached out to me and caught me and told me, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? We usually get engulfed with these uncertainties and when the winds are howling and the waves are crashing, we always cry out to be saved. And when we are at the point of drowning, understandably, 
Jesus will reach out to us. When Jesus calls out to walk with him into the unknown, it can be very hard. But the key here is to keep our eyes fixed on him. When we feel like the problems are trying to engulf us like a wave, or when the howling winds are saying that you can't make it, and the doubt starts to settle in, remember Jesus' question, Why do you doubt? Instead, let us focus our eyes on Him and know that He will be there holding our hands and guiding us each step of the way. Because with Him at the helm, there is no reason to doubt. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we should not doubt. Lord, thank you that when you call out into the water, when you call out into the unknown, you promise to be with us. And you promise not to leave us nor to forsake us. Lord, really this year had so much ups and downs. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are facing troubles right now, Father, or facing waves of problems, Lord, to comfort them and to remind them not to doubt in your power and not to doubt in your love, for you are with us. Lord, you know the desires of our hearts. And Lord, we ask you to continually check the desires of our hearts. If, it's, if the desires of our hearts are not glorifying, please take it away. Lord, we pray that you continue, Lord, to hold our hands when we are traversing dangerous paths, when we, are tri when we are uncertain, Lord, with the things that we are doing in our lives. And when we are doubting ourselves, Lord, remind us that you have created us wonderfully and fearfully made us. And the uncertainties that we have, Lord, please take it away. Right now, I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that you continue to protect them and you continue to make your face shine upon them and that you continue to love them, Lord, and that you continue to tell us not to doubt in you, but to focus our eyes and put our trust in you and in you alone. And all this I pray, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us reflect with this song. So 
My soul will rest in your 